What's up, Internet? You're tuned to episode 95 of the Steam Deck Podcast, Slip Screen Games' weekly gaming podcast all about Valve's portable PC powerhouse, the Steam Deck. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined, as always, by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Feels like a real classic week this week, you know? Yeah. We had Max on Flip Screen, you and me on Nintendo Noise, just the two of us. It's been a minute <laughs> since we've done just a one-on-one. Back to basics, you know? Yeah, back we, to basics. Yeah, back to the back to the OG crew. Uh, we don't really have a name for the flip screen people, do we? The flip screen crew, the flip screeners, you know, who knows? I don't know. I'll tell you what though. I, I've been I've been holding this one under, under my hat to debut. I'm gonna let you you Steam Deck guys know first. All right. You know, I think I came up with a great name for our listeners, which is to call okay. them the so call them the screen queens. Like screen okay. queens, if you're like, like a, a horror yeah, fan yeah, yeah. or like a horror actress, right? Yeah. Like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis of course, yeah. famous screen, scream queen. <laughs> so you guys could be the screen queens. And if that's gender non-affirming and you'd prefer something more neutral, you could be a flip freak. So maybe, you know. Um, yeah. We'll have to see. See what people think. See what people think. Screen queens. I'll tell you what, everyone I've told screen queens, they thought it was really good. So I feel like you guys should just own that personally. But, you know. <laughs> That's 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 for you to decide, I guess. You know, for all you screen queens out there, uh, I'm just gonna start throwing it out there, start making it a thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, like when we did pots heads over at Loot Pots, and yeah, that, that stuck great. so much harder than I thought it would. I remember yeah. that was like a bit, and then everybody leaned into it so hard, and Pixel Bar was like, "Absolutely not! Was, it's too late, man. It's gotten away. <laughs> the animal has just gotten away from us." <laughs> Oh, I stand great. by that, that one. I'm not. That was great. I, I'll tell you what. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm not one to give myself too much credit, but I'll give myself enough credit on that one. <laughs> Sometimes you just come out with these little morsels of goodness, you know, and you've got to just em- embrace it. Sometimes you got to just take the take the W. Yeah. Speaking of Ws, we got a fun one today, Steve. Lots of little bits of news. Uh, the the one that we wanted to kick things off with uh, was that FSR 3.1 with frame generation is here. And now this is something we've talked about a few times on this show. We've talked about it on some of our other shows too, right? About frame generation and how Mm -hmm. that seeming to potentially be kind of the next big target in, in kind of like the the next stage of, of console evolution and being able to get higher performance out of weaker machines and, you know, um, potentially something that could really shake things up in a big way. Right. And, um, I mean, based on what we're seeing on Reddit over on the Steam Deck subreddit, it seems like that future might be here already. Yeah, so FSR 3.1 was released this week. Um, it's currently available in five games with a sixth game coming. They're all PlayStation Studios titles. So we've got Horizon Forbidden West, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, Spider-Man Remastered, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and God of War Ragnarok is going to get it soon. Literally um, every game except Days Gone, is that right? Uh, no, oh, like no Horizon, guess, um... Horizon Zero Dawn's not there, for example, and then we don't have The Last of Us, the Enjoy uh, Collection's not there. And what's, the, what's the other one? Um, that's the roguelite. And it's the third person, and you play the woman who's like going through the weird house. That came mm, to the PC, house right? smart game. Yeah. What the Returnal. fuck is that game called? <laughs> Returnal. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Keep talking. Returnal. I'll get it. It's what Returnal. Is it? Returnal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I guess totally. Oof. Sorry. I was um, in a pool it... today. I'm a little sun drunk. <laughs> It um it brings a bunch of improvements to what we've come to expect from FSR. So FSR is um AMD's kind of alternative to NVIDIA's DLSS. It's the um kind of super resolution they call it. Um so it, it enables games to run natively at a lower resolution, but upscale it using um a bunch of techniques it, to achieve higher quality and pictures that would look like a native like 1080p image for example but it might be rendering internally at half that resolution um but this version brings as you mentioned frame generation which is the biggest fe- feature but it also does make um improvements to the image quality they've said that it's going to reduce flickering and shimmering and the ghosting reduction is also going to be there i've definitely noticed some of that flickering and shimmering in some games when i've turned fsr on and it's become it Sometimes it became a little bit of a distraction that I switched over to Intel's XESS. I'm definitely going to check out FSR 3 um, when I get a chance to to t- take a look at this. But as you mentioned, 
a bunch of people over on the subreddit. There's some YouTube channels also testing it. Spider-Man's um, obviously ran decently well on the Steam Deck previously. Um, but there's a video kind of doing the rounds that shows Spider-Man running at 60 to 70 frames per second with the very high preset selected in the options using FSR 3.1. And they were saying, the poster said that that's with uh, OS 3.6 right, with that new update, is I guess that the one that brings support for 3.1? I believe so, yeah. I think that okay. brings the latest Vulcan drivers, which okay. is needed that for FSR 3.1. Just wanted to make sure we had that context for folks. Um, yeah, I mean, that's crazy, right? I mean, 60 FPS on Steam Deck for, uh, you know, like, Remastered is, is a, a really beautiful game, right? And like, obviously, you know, the base version of it ran on the PS4 several years ago, but, you know, um, you take a look at that on, like, a high-end rig, and I mean, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty intensive game you know um and a, as you said ran fine on steam deck but it you know it ran like it ran on the ps4 right like so getting to see it 70 fps is that's pretty that's a pretty significant jump right like i mean I feel like before your best case scenario was like popping out like 30 45 right like that's that's no joke yeah and i probably still would cap a game like this at 40 fps i cap most games on the steam deck at 40 fps just to either conserve battery or to get a little bit more out of the visuals versus the performance because i've kind of find 40 to 45 especially on the oled where you've got that 90 hertz refresh rate 45 at half that um really kind of feels nice anyway um but i think the thing that i'm most excited about isn't the fact that it, we're getting these performance gains in games that ran all right anyway it's really what it kind of means for the future of games on the Steam Deck because I think I was kind of in that mindset of maybe we get, you know, the last generation of games, the PS4, maybe the PS5, but moving forward, you know, something like an Unreal Engine 5 game might not necessarily run in here. We spoke about Alan Wake not doing particularly well on the Steam Deck and there was kind of no real chance that that was going to run and it was one of the games of the year last year. And I mean, um, so like, that's, that's always been the thing with Steam Deck, right? Like it was like you look at last, or, you know, I guess what? Yeah, last year was Baldur's Gate 3. Year before that was Elden Ring. And it's like Elden Ring runs literally perfectly on Steam Deck for, you know, in, in most cases. Um, and, you know, with like Baldur's Gate, right, which is not like a super graphically intensive game or anything like that, like required all these compromises for you to get it running, right? And it's like, uh, that was the main reason I stopped playing it on Steam Deck was like, mm -hmm. ah, I want to play this on a bigger screen with better fidelity. And it's like, I mean, if I could bump it up to 30, and you know, or, or, you know, whatever. Like, I think I had it at 30, but like, all the textures were like on low and there was no draw distance and no shadows. Yeah. And like, if, if I could get even half of that shit turned back on, it's like, okay, like maybe that's, maybe that's good enough. Right. Like that's, that's, really I think exciting. that's the promise. I think that's the promise that FSR 3.1 is potentially giving us here. We're yet to see if, if this frame generation can work below 60 FPS, but even, but if it can, for example, if, even if I could get a game that was potentially running at 15, 20, 30 FPS, and I can get that up to 45, maybe 50. Or again, if it was 15 and you can get it to 30, to 30, 30 is a playable frame rate for most exactly, games, right? Yeah. Like we got used you get to that for decades, you know, it's like that, you can fuck with that. It then opens up like a whole realm of games that were potentially off limits to, to Steam Deck players that are now now an option that combined with the new drivers in steam os 3.6 with fsr 3.1 i think we've we've potentially got a, a wide variety of games that could potentially um could potentially be playable on the steam deck and the amd are promising that 60 uh this will be coming to 60 games um fsr3 is expanding support 60 games and counting that's fsr3 we don't know if they're going to get 3.1 in and there they said the what those generation. games are um, there's an image on their website, so it includes some um, larger titles like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Call Zone, uh, War Warzone, Concord is, is going to be getting it at launch. You said um, Call Zone, and I was like, Kill Zone? Really? No, <laughs> War Call of Duty War Zone. Um, Forspoken's um, got it already. Uh, obviously, we've spoken about the Spider-Man titles. I would imagine basically any Sony title moving forward is going to get it. They've got The Last of Us Part 1 listed on here. It's potentially uh, going to get it. Um, Starfield is going to get FSR 3.1 support. I feel like that would Cyberpunk. be a really good one. That would be a really good one, right? Think about how, like, I mean, and granted, it got a lot better, right? Like, people kind of figured it out. But, like, I remember at launch, Starfield was one of those games where it's like, eh, like, it, it literally runs, but it's not very good. And it's like, yeah, 
if you could eke out that little little extra bit, it might be enough to push it over, which would be sick. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it is worth noting that for frame generation to turn it on, that is an option. You can play with FSR without frame generation, or you can turn frame generation on. Talk to me about that. So, because like, you you kind of spoke about some of the other benefits, and I, I'm a little focused on the frame rate thing because I think it's the sexiest line item here. So let's say I'm I don't want to do that. I want to turn off frame generation. What are the other benefits that I can expect? Right, you said it's higher fidelity, better performance. Yeah, so essentially it's like FSR that you probably already used before in games or Intel's XCSS or maybe you've used DLSS where it will render a game at a lower resolution internally, say 540p, for example, and then it will use uh, FSR to upscale that so it looks like a, a high quality image that would be native to the display. And they've made a bunch of improvements to basically make it look better. AMD put out a video comparing Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart with FSR 2.2 versus FSR 3.1. I saw that. Impressive. Yeah, there's definitely reductions in the shimmering. There's less ghosting on, on movement of characters. Now, these are some things that certain people may not be susceptible at all. The shimmering really drives me crazy with um, anti-aliasing. And the fact that FSR 3.1 is potentially going to mitigate that issue is is pretty exciting for me. I, th I think it's one of those things like you and I have talked about this where like, you know, for you, because uh, like neither of us are really like big graphics guys, right? Like, you know, if, a, if I, I appreciate a game with nice graphics, right? But like, that's certainly not the end all be all, right? You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I went back and played games that were very old the last year that looked like dog water and I still love them, right? But it's like, you know, it. That's not the most important thing in a video game, right? Is is not always how it looks or even how it performs, right? It's it's the content. It's like it's the story. It's the gameplay. It's the you know it's the, the art yes. style sometimes. But you do want it to look the best it can be, in the same way that you just, you know you spent, said with Baldur's Gate three that you Precisely. wanted to experience it in the best way possible. And I think that is what I think is the interesting thing, right? Because you and I have gone back and forth about that, where, like, where the line is for me is different than where the line is for you, right? Because, like, there were games, like, like something like Days Gone, right? That, like, you chipped away at on your Steam Deck, and, yeah, maybe it wasn't, like, the best-looking version of it available, but you were like, well, I wouldn't have ever, ever even played it if I could only play no, it. No, I wouldn't have, no. <laughs> if I couldn't play that game on handheld, I wouldn't have played it. And there's a bunch of games like that, you know, and I probably would have not played as much Starfield as I did if I didn't stream it from my Xbox using Greenlight to the Steam Deck, and the fact that, you know, some people don't have an Xbox, right? They want to just be able to install Starfield natively, and if FSR 3 is an improvement on that, and we can get there, that's great. You know, they do have a recommendation for the frame generation stuff, and we've spoken about it before in a previous um, episode of the Steam Deck podcast. I can't remember which one it was, but um, if you search for Steam Deck podcast FSR, I'm sure it will come up. And um, they recommend playing... Yeah, uh, with with a minimum of around 60 fps before frame generation is, is turned on otherwise you may introduce some latency uh, which is opposite to, to what you would expect and what, what you would really want but with it on um and if you can achieve up to 60 fps you could potentially you know get a game running at 70 80 90 frames per second with fsr 3.1 including frame generation and that's that's what I was kind of driving to is like I think what ends up being interesting to me about that is for you that line is a little lower for me it's a little higher I mean like if this is enough to just raise that bar for me a tiny bit or lower it I guess I should say a little bit like that could be really huge that could mean like a huge percentage of games that I would have liked to play on Steam Deck but I end up playing on Xbox or on my desktop or whatever maybe I play there instead that's pretty cool yeah, and, it, and it's great. And I mean, obviously, this isn't just coming to, to Steam Deck. So if you do have um, a, a PC that you play on, whether that is Linux, Windows, whatever, whatever um, GPU you've got, it's not like DLSS where it only works with NVIDIA GPUs, it's will work with any GPU, um, you can experience it at FSR 3. So even if there's a game that you might not necessarily want to play on your Steam Deck that you potentially would want to play on your PC, um, you can definitely experience those gains there as well. And I and I do think this is is exciting to see AMD continually push this forward and open it up to, to anyone rather than NVIDIA's approach where it's, it's kind of um, impressive and very much more machine learning focused than FSR, which I think is ma mainly done by humans. Um, 
but that's closed. You can't run that on anything else. And I'd love to, I'd love to see more alternatives because I do think uh, as great as FSR three is, I think it's kind of been pushed a little bit by Intel's XESS for me. I really think Intel's XESS is, is great. I've not tried 3.1 yet. Um, I'm probably going to end up downloading Spider-Man or something to give it a go. Uh, which game would you recommend I check out, Pete? Because my uh, out of this, these these options, I'm going to guess you'd say Ghost of Tsushima would be the one I should try. Um, yeah, I'm probably inclined to say that because I think based on what I know about you and your taste, right? Like, I think Ghost could be for you um, easily because I think, like, the story is great. And there are a lot of really awesome, like, meaningful, cool moments. And I think if you get in the mindset of, like, well, when there's dialogue or, like, a story-centric thing, I'm going to pause and pay attention. And the rest of the time, you want to just run around a fucking incredible open world. I, if you haven't heard me talk about Ghost, because I haven't had much reason to talk about it on this show in the past, um, one of my favorite games, uh, probably my favorite, like, I don't mean this derivatively uh, or derogatorily, but like the way people talk about like the Ubisoft, like open world mm -hmm. checkbox kind of game. I think this is the best version of that kind of game for my money. Where it's and you just, know, I love those kind of games. Like I love when Far they're good. Cry, they're great. I love Far Cry. Yeah. I love Spider-Man. Right. And it's like, the, like Far Cry, right? Like what those kind of games are only bad when they're lazy, but this mm -hmm. game is like, it's gorgeous. It has incredible environments. And again, like it has nothing to do with the, console right or like performance like i played the game originally on ps4 right and it's like it was beautiful there too right and it looked great on a base ps4 just because like the golden forest is a fucking beautiful place in the real world that they realized you know and it's just it's just this gorgeous love letter to rural japan you know so it's like of course you're gonna enjoy the artistry of, of how it was you know the world was developed but again and like the combat is super fun and super tight i'd say go with ghost um, and you've played Spider-Man before, and I know you liked it. So, like, if you want to run it back and see if you'll actually, like, finish it on deck, maybe that's a good way to go because it's also on sale right now for, like, $30, which is pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong between those two, but you know how much I love Ghost, and I'd love for you to look, get into it and be like, if you played Ghost the way you played Days Gone, I would be so fucking happy to be able to talk to you about it. So, yeah, I think that probably is the one. I'm gonna have a look and see if it's on sale. I'm gonna I, guess it's not. It's not, and I was devastated that it's not because it's like, of course, it's not. It just came out, and if it was even like ten percent off, I would be like, yeah, I'll buy it. Fuck it, a like, fuck whatever. It's still twenty pounds cheaper than it is on PS5, which is insane. Yeah, is the <laughs> PC one the full edition? Does it have? It's the director's cut. It comes with everything. Yeah, yeah. it comes with the Iki stuff and everything. Yeah, that's so crazy. And it's forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, sixty here, but yeah, what? I don't know why it's forty nine ninety nine in the UK because it is sixty nine ninety nine on the PlayStation. So it's so weird. It's so <laughs> weird that they have committed to this. It really doesn't make sense. It would make no, it so much not. more sense to do it the opposite way. Because they're paying, yeah, like punish like, the PC players because you know you're not playing on our console and we get it. We yeah, can it's like it's, a, it's the directly. Steam tax, right? Like they're gonna take thirty percent, so it costs ten dollars more. Like that, it would people would be mad about it, but it would make so much more sense than the, than yes, the like the would. alternative where it's like, what do you mean I'm paying more on the when I'm buying it from you on your fucking box? Like it's so weird. Not to mention they have to pay a studio, uh, pay a studio or choir Nixies. And then port the game. Like there was additional work involved to get this over here as well. It was it's just like it's mental. It, it honestly, I feel like it must be a market thing. Like they feel like PC players won't pay pay seventy dollars. No, and I think they're one hundred percent right because we've only seen really one game come out and and charge that, which was Final Fantasy VII. Is that the only one? I know that's the most. The famous. only only like one in recent memory, but I can imagine when GTA hits, it's going to be sixty nine ninety nine. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how long PC holds that line because I don't think it's going to be for too much longer. No, well, I, I don't know. I don't know how much it matters when you think about how often sales happen on the Steam yeah, store. It's I like, think who's that's buying thing. Steam games full price anyway? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, unless it's like a big game you were waiting for. Are you really picking it up day and date? Like, why aren't you waiting for one of the like been, 10 annual sales that they have? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and they, and they give that. you the dates of the sales at, at the beginning of the year. So, no, so no, you know no, exactly you could when plan it's around happen. it. Right? It's yeah. like I've known when the dates for the Steam summer sale were for like six months, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, it's, I don't know. Uh, what? 
yeah it's it's madness to me but i, I think you're probably right it's, it's got to be a marketing thing that they know that they're not going to be able to sell a game but i also wonder if because sales are so prolific they're just like well we'll sell it at this price and we'll probably capture some people who were maybe on the fence about picking it up day one i know i've been burnt by buying games day one the last of us part one was a disaster buying a um, game day one on pc always kind of does feel like a gamble right yeah and and, and so maybe they, they maybe they're just ha- hoping that people will gamble and they're more likely to gamble at 50 or 60 dollars than they would at 70. yeah fair enough it's an interesting one i'm very excited to see what the long-term ramifications of this technology are uh, and not just fsr but like you said like nvidia's you know dss D- is it dlss yeah deep learning super sampling which is ov- is obviously rumored to come to the nin- the next nintendo switch or the successor right. to the nintendo yeah. switch so. and that's that's what i was about to say is like i think it's very interesting to think about what the long-term ramifications of this technology could be because like you know we've been talking a lot over the last couple of years about how like the cost of making games is going up and you know there's all this overhead and working with these high resolution assets is more expensive and it takes more people and you know um this would be so cool, right? Like if the baseline could be, well, you you don't need to hit 4K, you need to hit 1080 and like it can get upscaled to 4K, right? Or like, that's like already a thing we've done, right? Like you think about like the Xbox 360 did that. It upscaled to 1080, right? Because the, the base yeah, resolution mean, this, was 720 and it's like, that was fine, you know? It's there's like, definitely There's definitely a difference between just, oh, we're just upscaling it and we're basically taking the image and we're stretching it and we're maybe applying a bit of basic sharpening. Right, whereas like, this is like what, actually using technology to make it yeah. look better, right? So it's like... Yeah, and, and, and creating something out of nothing, you know, with frame generation, yeah. it's saying, I'm going to estimate in the next frame where that character is going to move to and I'm going to insert a frame in between this is, is the application of AI that's actually useful. Yes, 100%. Right? This is the kind of stuff where it's like, yeah, I mean, that could be great, right? Like, that could be a great way to take pressure off the console or the PC and, like, potentially add more headroom for, like, more models on screen or, or you know, who knows, right? Like, the, the, the long-term ramifications of it could really be extremely wide-reaching. Like, we're only at 3.1. What's 4.1 look like, right? What's 5.1 look like? You know, well, and what happens if, if you know, when Microsoft comes into the arena because they've announced that they've got their own thing that they're working on, it's probably going to be play play a big part on the Xbox side of things. PlayStation's rumored to have the same thing for the PS5 Pro that they've got this machine learning chip in there that's going to do the PlayStation super sampling that I think they called it PSSS. Um, <laughs> so you know, the, all everyone's <laughs> kind of working on the same tech, and I think. AMD is the only one, or I guess Intel too, that's opening it up and saying anyone can use this. And I think maybe we see someone like Valve come into the mix and go, you know what, we're going to integrate that as part of the Steam work stuff. And we're going to enable you to, to kind of tap into it on the Steam OS level. And we're going to do some kind of machine learning chip in the next Steam Deck that's going to enable you to kind of tap into some ups, up sampling or super resolution stuff. Definitely something that I would love to see them do more and like see see how that can be integrated on a hardware side in in like in the same way that xbox implemented smart delivery right where it's like it's just a thing that you can opt into rather than it being a thing you need to like yeah the same deal with auto resume it's like it's not on every yeah. game but you come to expect it and when the game doesn't have it you're like oh what the hell you're like what the fuck why you know and it's, yeah, yeah. It, it would be so great to see that to see you know the nvidia's and and the you know um sorry who's fsr I, md like like md yeah to see the, those actors be the ones figuring out this side of things that you know tangibly benefits performance and all that stuff but like doesn't put it on the developers to have to figure it out you know because that's like there are so many stories right of like games like that like um i'm thinking of like gen 2 of pokemon right or it was like the whole like post game in kanto the only reason that got on the the cart was because uh satoru wada like figured out a way to compress the game right and it's like imagine not having to think about some of those kinds of problems and like optimization because like there are these tools that are just built into the technology and do it for you that would be awesome that would be incredible you know who's you know we'll see we'll see what the what the ceiling on it ends up being but i mean seeing this 3.1 and you're getting spider-man up to 70 fps on steam that's pretty 
that's pretty promising, I think, for what the long term, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, of... you mentioned the Xbox side; like, it definitely reminds me of the like frame rate boost stuff that they did on the the kind of Xbox level. You know, the games had to do nothing, but all of a sudden, the games that you had ran at, at sixty FPS or one hundred twenty yeah, FPS like... instead of the original thirty FPS. Yeah, you boot up a game like like I remember you were playing like Prey when on uh, when our week first got it was like oh it runs it it looks like a new fucking game it looks like a a a, a remaster that historically you would have paid sixty dollars for right for yeah. it to run a little bit better and it's like no it just works now it's just how it is yeah that's awesome yeah that is so I mean, cool something else I'd love to see um, Valve kind of integrate is like an auto HDR feature because the number of games that that don't support HDR or the HDR support's broken at the moment on Steam Deck is is kind of up, uh, annoying and a bit upsetting i'd love to be able to utilize that beautiful oled screen a little bit more like i've been playing forza horizon 4 and that is a game that does support hdr and it just looks phenomenal like the difference between like the the sky and the ground and like the the difference between the deep dark black that you get from the oled and like a bright explosion that happens is just insane and i i'd love to see some kind of tech like that integrated windows has it built in it has like an auto hdr feature xbox has it i'd love to see valve bring that to steam os that'd be something that'd be cool to, to integrate definitely so uh, speaking of integration, we're going to talk about Nexus mods coming to Linux and Steam Deck in just a minute here. But before we do that, let me remind you that this episode of the Steam Deck podcast is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of July. They are, of course, Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hassemeyer, a.k.a. Sobe, Snackigo, Steve Stompy, Susan Likes Cats and also Boobies, Ty the Dude, Voodoo Vic, and Wakahula. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com slash Big Screen Games. You're all the realest of the real, and we greatly appreciate your support of this and all of our sister shows. Remember, if you want to get involved just like they did, if you want to go above and beyond and show your support just like they did, if you want to get involved in the community or check out our sister shows, Nintendo Noise and the Flip Screen Games podcast, you can do all that and much, much more by heading over to FlipScreen.Games. That's our website where you will find links to all those things and a bunch of other cool stuff, however you choose to get involved. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Steam Deck Podcast, y'all. We love you. Let's get back to it, Steve. So, Nexus Mods, they're coming to Linux and Steam Deck. All I know about this, we talked a little bit about it beforehand. You've tried it, and you can put some mods in Stardew Valley. Talk to me. What is Nexus Mods? Talk to me about this. So, Nexus Mods is one of the, the kind of biggest modding communities on the, the web if not the biggest, uh, they support almost 3,000 games. They've got wow. like almost 600,000 mods that you can install. Um, and basically, there's an app that you installed originally on your Windows PC, but they've now decided to bring that to, to Linux and, and I think Mac as well as a cross-platform application. And that includes the Steam Deck. And basically, you download it, you log into your Nexus Mods account, and you select your game that you want to um, install the mod to. In the alpha at the moment, it only supports Stardew Valley uh, while they're testing, but they will be bringing um, additional games later this year. Um, and you can basically just pick from a bunch of mods that you've you've added in on um, Nexus Mods on the website, or you've chosen to download manually, and you can just bring them into, into the game. Um, and there are a bunch of mods for, for Stardew Valley that I know a lot of people um, enjoy. There's like Stardew Valley Expanded, which is uh, like a fan mod that adds in a bunch of new locations, a bunch of new characters you can romance. It adds like all sorts of stuff. There's additional translations in there. Um, and that's something I've always wanted to play. So I think I'm going to give that one a go. I just tried installing awesome. a couple of smaller mods there's like ways you can cheat so you can basically run it like a sandbox mode if you want you can give yourself oh, like cool. unlimited money and give yourself all of the stuff and just make the farm look perfect if you want to um so there's a there's a lot of cool stuff you can do um apparently the next game they're going to be working with is cyberpunk 2077 which obviously does run pretty well on steam deck as well so we could expect to see those mods coming uh, so forwards. it's it's an early alpha right now then i guess right yeah, it's in uh, very early alpha at the moment. Um, you can download the app from their website, and we'll put a link in the description. Um, basically, you download it. It's a Linux app image. Drag that to your applications folder or wherever you want to run it from on your Steam Deck. Double-click it. It'll open up. It'll ask you to log into your Nexus Mods account, and then you can just start installing mods for, for your games. 
uh, in, and in this case, it's only Stardew Valley currently, but they will be adding more games. Um, they say they're going to be releasing a new update every three weeks. Um, so we could probably expect to see Cyberpunk coming out in the, ne in the next three weeks or six weeks, and then they'll slowly add um, more games moving forwards. I think they're looking at like Skyrim and Fallout and things like that, the most popular games on Nexus yeah. Mods. That would make sense, right? Like, <clears throat> obviously, the Bethesda games have always had a pretty prolific modding community. So much so that they got mod support added on consoles, which is yes. like not ever <laughs> existed before, right? Like, <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, this was um, this was a, a really kind of nice surprise. It came out of nowhere yesterday. It's a really been, big win for the Linux folks. Yeah, yeah, they've been working on it, and they had like a a, a Git repo up. Um, so we knew that this kind of was was on the cards. But the fact that they just released it and you can kind of start using it is uh, is really cool. Uh, we've never really had like a decent mod manager on on Linux, at least not one that I know of that I've been able to get working on the Steam Deck. Um, and being able to just download this, pick the mods and get it working, it really is easy to use. At the moment, obviously, it only works in desktop mode. Um, and I think you probably only would ever really use something like this in desktop mode, where you just go in and you pick the mods that you want. You can either flick them on and off and then you play your game. Um, so it's not perfect it's in alpha but they're, they're looking for feedback and if you really love playing stardew valley with mods you want to play stardew valley extended for example um definitely head over to nexus mods and, and give it an install that's awesome man so you said you tried a couple small mods what have you tried so far anything interesting um, so i just uh i just installed like um like the, there was like a skip intro mod and things i was just testing to see if it worked um so there's nothing I've really given a try because I didn't want to fuck up my Stardew Valley Steve because I've sure. actually been playing Stardew Valley. But I'm probably going to install Stardew Valley Extended um, and give that a good go. And um, I think report probably, back. Yeah, I think I'll probably make a, a video on it just to show how easy and simple it is to kind of get it up and running and whether you might want to use this or not um, because you do need to launch the game through the Nexus Mods app in order to, to run the mods. You can't just play it via Steam. So... Um, like I said, it's not perfect, but if you're into the modding scene, this is probably the best um, manager we've had so far. There's no kind of manual process that you need to go through in order to get it to work. It is literally just kind of download the mods, turn them on and off, and then just hit play. So as they add support for more games, I'm sure more and more people will kind of uh, flock to this. Yeah, I mean, this is really cool. I mean, it's like something I've never really thought about, like when we've discussed in the past, like the challenges of of like having linux as an alternative to pc if you wanted to be like a dedicated you know uh i should say to windows if you want to be a dedicated pc gamer right and you wanted to run linux instead of windows it's it's not the most viable alternative for certain situations right it's, it gets better and better all the time um but this is the kind of thing where it's like i mean one of the i would say probably like if you were going to sit down on paper right and have like a you were going to write a, a fictional scene between a console gamer and a PC gamer bickering about which one is better. Mod <laughs> support would be one of the things you'd talk about, right? Like, yeah, I want to install cute. Thomas the Tank Engine in Resident Evil, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean like, so many things, right? Like, the Thomas the Tank Engine in Skyrim, Thomas the Tank Engine in GTA, Tom, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those things that is often celebrated as one of the reasons you play on pc and how to breathe new life into games that you've played to death right yeah. and and like whether that's fan content or like just bullshit like that right of like oh cool like um you know like i i used to love uh looking at gta 5 and 4 mods back in the day when it's like oh like we put iron man in the game we put the hulk in the game you know like whatever and it's like it's just cool it's a cool thing that people take the time to do it it's a cool way to you know, get in there and mix it up and breathe new life into old games and um, getting to see this like hopefully becoming, you know, no longer a thing that is is uh, limited to folks who are using Windows, like not only Linux, but also Apple is like, that's really great. That's awesome. Huge win. Huge win for the modding community, which is, uh, I would say, you know, probably the heart and soul of the PC community, right? It's like some of the most dedicated players are the folks making that shit and enjoying that shit. So yeah Huge agreed w. i'm i'm looking through the list of mods for stardew valley now and one that has had 3.3 um, million installs is the npc map locations mod for stardew valley <laughs> <And I could've, laughs> that is I brilliant 
I could have done with this the other day. I had caught a fish that Emily really wanted. I think it was an eel, and she really wanted a fi- uh, an eel. And I couldn't find her for ages. I was wandering around. I wasted, like, the entire day trying to find her because I really... One, I, I'm pretty new to the game again. I, I've done it. I've restarted it. And I wanted to meet and greet everyone because that's, like, one of the, the things you've got to do is, like, one of your quests. So I wanted to find her. And then I wanted to give her the fish so I could get some money because I've got, like, no money at the moment. So I'm definitely installing that mod. Um, Dude, there's, like I, a bu- there's, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. Of cool that's stuff. the thing I definitely would have benefited from when I was playing that uh, a couple years ago. I remember, um, I think it's Leah is the name of the painter, right? Who lives? Yeah, mm-hmm. she was like the character I romanced. And I remember like, I would like, I had like a really strict schedule where it's like, get up, do the chores, run to her house before she leaves. so I can give her a gift and not fuck up the whole rest of my day, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. There's a tractor mod as well. Like you can farm on your on your farm with a tractor. Whoa. There's like such cool stuff going on in, in the Study Valley world that I've never even like thought about. So that's tight. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that the two games that they're like it's like Stardew Valley and Cyberpunk. The two like the two of the most extreme examples of what <laughs> video games can be, right? Like it's like a uh uh indie darling pixel art made by one person, spiritual successor to an old classic. And a massive triple A, two hundred plus people worked on it for like nine years. Like it's so funny that those are like the. It's like ah yes, the two genders, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean they did specifically know a reason. Be clear. That was a joke. Want to be clear? That was a joke. <laughs> Just want to be clear. I think people know people. <laughs> <laughs> that is a um, meme. They they did specifically say why doesn't it support Skyrim, Fallout 4, etc. Um, because they are, or if you look at the Nexus mod sort by games, the top games are Skyrim, Skyrim Special Edition, uh-huh. Skyrim, Fallout 4, Fallout uh-huh. New Vegas, and then Stardew Valley and Cyberpunk. So they've they've skipped the top four and they've gone straight to Stardew Valley and then Cyberpunk. So I think um, they've mentioned that there's some some reasoning. Um, and that... Ooh, Fallout, it would make sense because they literally just updated it. Like they just did the next gen update, and that broke a ton of mods. Yeah, so they said that the Bethesda modding community already has several good choices for mod managers that offer a wide array of useful features. As we continue adding more games to the app, we'll build more features such as loads, order support, file conflict management, and more. And each of these features will be designed in such a way that they're compatible for both existing and upcoming games where it makes sense to do so. So it seems like with something like skyrim or fallout you might have a mod that relies on another mod that relies on another mod that relies on another mod and so you need to choose the order that those mods kind of load in and the nexus mods manager doesn't currently support that but they will be adding support for that in the future that makes sense that's like a big deal with um I, i had that with fallout when i was playing it i was playing with a few mods on and um yeah, like if uh, I had there was like after the update, they like changed the load order of of them. And it was like it like fucked my save up for a second. It was like, oh, like not in a serious way, but it was doing the thing where it's like this save depends on mods that are not installed. And I was like, what do you mean? And it's like I went in and it was like they were all installed, but like in the yeah. wrong order. And like two of them were turned off. And it was like, what the fuck happened here? You know, like I adjust it all and everything. And then it was fine. But yeah, it's like that's obviously pretty important for games like that right where it's like i know um i had a couple installed where like i had one where it uh it was it allowed you to have more than one companion at a time and then i also Mm -hmm. had a companion ai like improvements kind of thing and that got switched at one point and it was like uh, just like you know threw up and was like i don't know what you're trying to like uh, i need this one that's not there now this one can't work and it's like okay relax i'll fix it (laughs) oh man Uh, you know I always wanted to get into modding, but I always ran into stuff like that. Even with Steam Workshop, I would run into like issues on some, something like Euro Truck or whatever. <clears throat> and I really, really hope that support for Fallout comes to the Nexus Mods Manager by the time that Fallout London eventually releases, because I really want to play Fallout London. I want to play that, that it so, got delayed again. It's so uh, <laughs> shitty that that happened to them. Like it's cause it was like so close. It's such a bummer, especially considering as someone who was playing fallout four, like actively for the first time, like all the way through, um, as like, I was like 20 hours in when they pushed out the next gen update. And I was like, man, this was not worth it. 
Like it was just not worth it. Like, <laughs> yeah, cool. It runs at 60 FPS, but the lighting is totally fucked. Like, you know, it's I remember I was like in a cave and it was like the lights kept flashing, and I was like, this is driving me insane. <laughs> it's better now. Yeah. But yeah, it was a rough couple of weeks for sure. I, I hope yeah. they get it. I hope they get it squared away sooner than later. Cause I know it, it was one of those things where that mod depended on a few other mods or maybe one that got broken with the update. And now they can't update and fix it until this other team of people update this like 10 year old mod. It's like, are they even going to do that? Who the fuck knows? You know? Yeah. Ho hopefully it comes. I mean, one that I've been, um, yeah, I, as when this kind of got announced, I had a look through Nexus mods to see what, games were supported and stuff and one i really want to get to because i was really hoping for the oblivion remaster or remake to be announced at um the xbox event this year it didn't happen but there's a bunch of mods that kind of m improve the textures there's an unofficial oblivion patch which is one of the biggest mods isn't, um, there, a like, isn't there a project right now where they're recreating oblivion in skyrim isn't yes there is too? yeah there yeah. is a thing yeah really cool um, but but like the unofficial Oblivion patch uh, fixes two and a half thousand bugs and 70,000 object placement errors oh that Bethesda, Bethesda never fixed. Um, but the, the fans and the community has decided to fix instead. So it's, it's stuff like that that just makes these games that kind of just last forever. Yeah, it's really cool, especially with like games like that where, you know, um, who knows if we'll ever get like a proper port, you know, like Bethesda's kind of you know, like, obviously, they've re-released Skyrim, like, 30 times, right? But, like, aside from that, they don't really do that that often, you know? It's like, we never, have, like, I mean, think about how easy it would have been to do a re-release of Fallout 4, of New Vegas, of any of those games, right? I mean, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I saw Todd Howard get quoted about, like, not ever wanting to remake Fallout 1 or 2, because he's like, I feel like part of the charm of those games is, like, when they were made, and, like, how, like, they... You know, like they they're of their time, you know, and I, I feel like remaking them, you you know, they're also not his games. So I can kind of understand yeah. him not wanting to do that. Yeah, well, I, I guess maybe he was more talking about like why it wouldn't be a priority for like the studio. Yeah, but, you know, whatever, Um, which I can I can see that, you know, and I think like with certain games like that, even just like having little quality of life mods is really nice, like, you know, like improving like auto save or, or you know whatever right like little things that just make it feel less like you're going back to a game that is yeah it's like you're not going back in time you know because it is a game from 2005 so it makes sense that it feels like a game from 2005 at times. it's almost 20 years old right it's like yeah of mm -hmm. course it feels old you know um and there's some games that are that old that age better than others but you know i think they're i think where it ends up being problematic is when there's like quality of life features that you've come to expect just because video games have evolved and like they're not there like that always feels weird like they're doing that um they just announced it at that capcom event they're doing the re remake of um dead rising and one of the like yeah one of the like three top bullet points was like you can walk and shoot at the same time you know and it's like what a novel fucking you know it's so funny to think that like oh yeah like there was a time where that, that was wasn't a novel the thing for a Capcom game, though, because like they they set that boundary in the original Resident Evil. So you got to stand on the spot and shoot. I mean, I don't know how else they would have done it because you didn't have sticks on the original PlayStation controller. Hey, it, it was, was like a fucking a tank. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was dreadful. I. I, I yeah, I, you just can't go back and play play those. Like, there's some games I just can't go back to, like old 3D games. It just it ruins them. It's I think like it depends on. The, I think it really depends on the game because there are some games. Yeah, that's another example, right? There are some of those games, like a great example. I I think if you play Super Mario 64 this day to this day with mod support that changes this the camera control from C buttons to a stick, plays plays great. Ages yeah, but even like well. I go back to like Mario sixty four and like it feels wonky because I can't free roam and like the camera suddenly goes off for like that's what I'm saying though. If you get stuff. if you get one of the mods that adjusts the camera to be like a more modern camera, I don't think that game feels super dated. No, no, I, I, I but I would love to see that remade. Oh, I would absolutely. love absolutely to see that game remade. But like that's my point though. Is like I think there are some of those games where it's like, like you can. Some of the old PS1 games, for example, right, like have analog support because they had they made the original analog. Yeah, and we and we got the Tomb Raider remaster, which brought 
kind of twin stick. Yeah, support, and it's like and they didn't change really the well. game much at all. They just made it fucking control like a game that was not made for the PS1, mm. you know, and it was like 3D games were brand new and there were no sticks. But that's the thing yeah. is all you need to do is make small adjustments on some of these games, which is why like the modding stuff is so empowering because it's like there are plenty of games that are just never going to get that treatment, you know, and it's mm-hmm. like thankfully dedicated fans right out there making it accessible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Nexus Mods is is one to keep an eye on. If you play Stardew Valley, head over to to their website and and download the the alpha for, for Linux um, if that's something you're into. Uh, but I'm definitely still in that NPC map locations because that's going to be key. <laughs> definitely. Well, I'm excited to see your video. I'm excited to hear more about it. This is very cool. Um, overall, back to back, really, really nice, nice announcements today. Right? Those are some really cool things to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, you think you're going to check out any of the FSR 3 games? I guess you've kind of played them all, so... I have played them all. Um, <laughs> but, so, I am in, like, the most annoying dance with myself right now, where I, I have been like, do I spend 60 more dollars on Ghost of Tsushima to play it a fifth time? And no. that seems dumb, and, man, I want to so bad. And, like, this, I'm like, oh, 70 FPS with that? Ah! So who knows? Maybe, maybe I will. Um, I'll Watch tell you some what. videos and see if it run, runs nicely with FSR three on Steam, yeah. and you'll probably convince yourself to buy I came, it. I came this close to buying. I just, I just bought games on the Steam sale like last night. Finally, I pulled the trigger on a couple. Um, and if you're interested, I grabbed the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I grabbed, um, uh, uh, Mullet Mag, Mullet Magic. Is that what it's called? Magic Mullet? I can't remember. So I played it. You'll remember if you're a longtime listener. I think it's Mullet Magic. I played it uh, when Max and I did the Steam Next Fest review. And it's, it's like a Doom-style, uh, okay. like, uh, boomer shooter that's also a um, roguelite. And it's, like, kind of like a, like, it's kind of like a mocking love letter to, like, 80s action movies. And it's this, like, hyper corpo like world and it's super my jam i really enjoyed it and i'm really excited to put some more time into it um i missed it when it came out at launch but i'm it's i think gonna be my kind of new like when i just want something that's like gameplay oriented i'm excited to jump back into it uh and then i grabbed one other game that is escaping me right now but that's okay um and yeah i i was like this close to pulling the trigger on spider-man again i'm like i don't need to play that game of, i don't need to play that game again i just replayed it not that long ago i'm good for now but i'm like it's only 30 dollars, you know <laughs> yeah it's temp- and there's, there's too many tempting if people want to know what me and max bought i'm, I'm not telling you you're gonna have to listen to last i'm week's not telling you we spoke all about it we spoke about <laughs> the steam sale last week and it's well worth a listen i think that was a good episode I really can't remember what the third game was. I thought it was like a dragon, but then I remembered I didn't get that because it was on Game Pass. And I was like, I was playing over there. Huh. I want to just see if I can find it real quick before we before we sign off. Uh, wait. Uh, Steve, vamp, vamp. <laughs> <laughs> He's currently just, just scrolling through emails, I think. Or, uh, or are you on the Steam app? Because that app I'm, I'm, in, I'm on the Steam app in my library to see like new editions, and it's just not telling me. It's like, God damn it. Pick, pick your emails. It'll tell you what I am, you I am, I am, on the I am. receipt. I am. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's, that's definitely the route to get reached. I was yeah. a boomer. I'm sorry. I didn't really have much on my wish list that went. Oh, no. You know sale. what it was, Yakuza? I got that. It was like $9. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Those games are fun. Those games are a lot. I've never fun. played them, and that one, like, I've had multiple people be like, "If you've never played one, this would maybe be for you because it's turn based and you like RPGs, right?" So it's like maybe give this one a shot. So we'll see. Yeah, they, they're, they're they're worth it. They're worth a go, um, and judgment's worth it as well. I remember playing through some of that with Zade, which was good fun. Nice. Well, I, I will say this before we before we bounce. Uh, we got a couple really good questions for the Steam Docket today that I don't want to rush through since we're kind of at the end of our time today. So I say let's save them for next week. If there's not a big news piece, maybe we could just do like a mailbag episode again because there's two here that I think are like worth digging in on for mm-hmm. a, quite a bit of time. So if you guys have any fun questions for us next for next week, if you got any comments on what we talked about today, are you excited about checking out Nexus Mods on Steam Deck? 
are, what are the games you like would be excited to see get that mod support sooner than later? And uh, what are your hopes and dreams for SFSR 3.1? Are you picking up any of those PlayStation games and trying to play them at the these insanely <laughs> sick new frame rates? Because I would love to hear uh, how that went for you. Um, so yeah, whatever whatever you want to write in with, whatever your thoughts and feels are, make sure you hit us up all the ways that you can. And you can find links to all that and much more over at flipscreen.games. That's our website where you will find links to our sister shows, Nintendo Noise and the Flipscreen Games podcast. You will find our Discord. You will find our Patreon. You will find all the ways that you can get in touch or join the community, however you choose to get involved. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the show. For the put, I almost said for the crew. Woof. Long day, folks, for the crew. I've been Pete. He's been Steve. I love you. We'll see you next week. You went say see you later, screen queens. I'll see you later, <laughs> screen queens. <laughs>